Hey, this video is about importing FBX animations into Unreal Engine with timecode attributes. Now, why would you want this? Well, let's say that you're recording motion capture data for your body motion, and at the same time, you're recording voices and facial animation with Live Link Face, and you want to bring all that data into Unreal Engine and line all those things up. Well, if all of those systems have timecode information and they're all recording, you know, the same clock, uh, it's as easy as a click. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So here's the documentation page for this feature. You use animation, custom animation attributes to bring in the timecode values. Now here it's saying you can add any kind of custom attribute, uh, but what we're interested in are specific timecode attributes. Now you can change what attributes are used for timecode in the project settings. Uh, by default, they're using these values. And in uh, a DCC application like Maya, you can set those values and add keyframes and those values will come in to Unreal Engine. As long as you have this option ticked. So I'll walk you through that. Let's first look at the source in Motive where we ha can show you the timecode. Uh, here I am in Motive and I've loaded in the session from the other day. And we're going to look at that same take we've been looking at, Nephew T3. Now, uh, these have already been starred, and the stars are coming from our notes. So we're, we're starring all of the takes that we plan to process. And the processing that I'm doing here is very simple. It's just the reconstruct, auto label, and solve. Uh, I'm not doing any marker cleanup or, you know, labeling of any kind. This is all I'm doing. And it's fairly, fairly quick, this process. And you can see here down at the bottom, we've got time code. We can see also if you change this view to the advanced view, you can see the time code start and end values here. And these are the values that we want to come through. So we're going to now save that reconstruction and export the tracking data. And these are the settings. This is what I've been doing. You give it a name, I'll call this one demo. FBX binary is what we use, and use time code needs to be checked, export skeletons obviously. And this section here, this is fairly important. Uh, I change this to custom. The default is all skeletons. Uh, I change it to custom because Unreal Engine can only import one skeleton. If you have an FBX file with two skeletons in it, two sets of animations, which is what would have been exported if I left that option the same. Unreal Engine can only import one of them, it will ignore the second one. So I use this option here uh, to just export a single skeleton. I do it for one set of motions and then the other. This is less important, but here the name separator by default is a hyphen, uh, and I choose the colon so it shows up like a namespace in Motion Builder and Maya. And those are the options that I choose. Now I export this to a subfolder in my session day called export. Now let's load this up inside of Motion Builder and see what we see. Okay, so in uh, Motion Builder now, and we'll bring in our motion. Open all takes, there's only one take in here. And immediately we see we've got a huge frame number, which is an indication that we're looking at a time code, a file with time code. So that huge frame number can translate into time code and you can choose in Motion Builder to view it as a frame number or to view it as a time code. And it's just a math operation to go from one to the other. So we're gonna change the display here and it's under the time menu and show as time code. And you could see we've got 14, 56, 23, 93. So it's not 18 frames this time, it's 93. Why is that? It's because our time base is of this timeline is set to 120 frames per second. Now check this out. Here on the root of this character, if we go over to the properties tab, we've got these time code values right here, these attributes, these custom properties that are the exact names that we're, that we're gonna use in Unreal Engine. And they have the correct properties, including the frame number is 18. 1456, 23, 18. That's the start of our sequence in the 24 FPS time base. We can even graph these over in the F curves editor and see these values uh, displayed here. 
Now, what's interesting is that even though Motion Builder is showing these values, I don't see these same properties when I look at it in Maya. And I don't fully understand that. So let, let me show you. Over here in Maya, I'm going to bring in the same file. This is the exact same file. I didn't show the, uh, the file browser, but I, you, know, you can trust me. It's the same file. We see the same big giant number here for the frame. And just like in Motion Builder, we can change the display of this timeline to show this as uh, time code. And with a click, we see we get the same exact start frame value with the 120 FPS timeline. That's the same value. And now if we look at the root of this character over under extra properties, there's nothing. Nothing on the shape either. There's no extra properties here. Um, so I don't really understand exactly what Motion Builder is doing and where it gets those properties. I even tried to inspect this file with the FBX SDK, but I did not find any properties. So instead, I wrote this um, relatively simple script and it relies on a function that I didn't write to convert the frame number into time code. And I got this function from uh, from the internet. I did a search for Python and time code and I found this gist right here. If you do this same search, you'll find it too. Uh, that will convert from a frame number into time code. People more clever than me have already worked this out. So I just imported this library into my uh, Maya scene and uh, and then I just use this to convert the value and write it onto uh, some new properties with the, the names that Unreal Engine is looking for. So I also am changing the, uh, the timeline to 24 FPS so I get it recorded and uh, keyframed at the values I'm looking for. I didn't mess with subframes because I didn't think it was needed and uh, I just execute the thing and it steps through the timeline uh, and you can see here that I've written these new properties with the keyframe across the timeline for the different values and there's our start frame value 24 uh, 14 56 and 18 is the start frame and we could see we've got these values here in the graph editor as well just like we saw in motion builder now i'm going to export this i don't tend to use the uh, export option. Um, I use this game exporter, which is pretty handy. Um, and I also found that exporting all seems to work more reliably than export selected um, with this version of Maya that I'm using 2020. Maybe I should update my Maya. I don't know. Got to make sure you have this animation toggle ticked. Don't forget that. And we'll export that as uh, the same take name with an underscore TC for timecode. Now let's bring that data into uh, Unreal Engine. Here's the file we just wrote. Bring that like so. We get our import options. This goes on Leo. And we need to make sure that we have checked this one. Import, import attributes as, imp, import attribute curves or animation attributes. So that one we wanna make sure is ticked and import. And now that that's here, we can see we've got our motion and here we've got our new attributes with 1,315 keyframes. Let's check that out in a sequence. So we'll make a level sequence. We'll open it. Bring that over to our sequence. Get our animation track and bring that track onto our animation track. And when we right click, what do we get? We get some properties here now with time code values. So this is the magic that we're looking for because once you have that, you can select this, use this option here, snap selections to timeline using source time code. And what that will do is it will move it to that location on the timeline. So if we go to the start of this thing, 
we could see that it's moved it here to the integer value of that frame, which we can use to align our all of our time code objects. So that's not the only way to bring these time code properties into your uh, animation sequences when importing FBX. My colleague Byron has made a plugin that is even easier to use than this, and I'll show you how to install that now. So you can find that uh, in the link in the description. It's here. Uh, and then you just follow these instructions. Now, one of the things that I'm going to point out is this link here to the releases section uh, isn't working at the moment. Byron will fix that. Uh, the, the problem is it's, it's pointing to our enterprise GitHub, that link. So uh, this should be working by the time you get there, hopefully. Uh, if not, you can compile it from source. You can download from here and try that. But when you download this uh, zip file, uh, it will go to your downloads folder, you double click, the instructions say go inside there, find your project. Uh, I'm not going to put this in Garbage Street because I had some trouble compiling. Garbage Street uh, is a little crufty at the moment. Uh, but I'll just put it in this other temp project. I'll make a new folder called FBX Time Code Import. And I'll put these things inside of this project, like so. And then we'll open the project. Here's the first pop-up message. That's about another plugin. Uh, and then you may need to enable the project, the plugin first, which is what is happening here. So we'll enable the plugin. It's under other. When I toggle this on, it'll ask me to restart. We say yes. And then we get this pop up message Would you like to rebuild? Yes. And then you wait while it builds. When Unreal Engine comes up, you'll see you have the plugin now enabled. First thing you want to do is check your project settings. There is this option for the timecode importer, and you'll need to toggle this on for this to work. Uh, if this is not toggled on, the plugin never gets triggered, so you can just revert to normal behavior if you're having any kind of issues. So now I can bring in that motion. Now, this is the original. This is not the one with timecode that I wrote from. Maya, that's the original one with no time code, with no attributes. So the plugin's going to add these attributes. I'm going to put this on the Leo. And these options don't, uh, this option no longer is a factor. And when we look, we now have these root attributes with a, a single key on them, which is the start time code. We could check that with a level sequence. I will put this into the sequence, get my animation track, and put this animation on the track. And when we right click, we can see we now have time code properties. Now the value is a few frames off, so I'll check with Byron to see if we can sort that out. Uh, but that's still quite close, and you can see if we use the wrench, we can move the sections to the time code. And here we are. So it's moved it to 23 even, but that's really uh, all we need for this alignment. We're going to have our recording starting at slightly different times, so there may need to be some nudging uh, for some of our files, like audio, for example, is often starting before the other um, things are triggered. And that's how you get these timecode properties onto your FBXs when you import them into Unreal Engine. 
If you made it all the way to the end of this video, it means you found something valuable here. Consider giving us a subscribe uh, and I'll keep making these kind of helpful videos. Until next time, thanks.